So how y'all doing this morning? Well, well, I can get this set up. Anyway, I hope you find today's message revolutionary. I hope that as I'm reading these scriptures, you revel in them. Hallelujah. Uh, before I get started here, before I get started here, I want to give you a few names you're going to hear as I'm reading this, so you know uh, where I'm coming from and what, what these things are. You may not know um, who these individuals are or what they are, and so I'm giving you the, who they are so that you'll understand what Christ is talking about here. All right. The first one I'm giving you is Nicol Nicolaitans, okay, or Nicolites. Now, they were considered heretical by the mainstream church of Jesus' day. They were known in the cities of Ephesus and Pergamum. Now, these hereticals, they were individuals who differed in opinion from established religious norms. In other words, they twisted the gospel into something it wasn't. Wow. Now, I'm sure you've all heard of Jim Jones. Yes. Oh, yeah. Come on. He really twisted that word into something it wasn't. The Nicolaitans are not to be confused with Nickelodeon. If you ever watch that video, you're also going to hear the name Balaam. Now, Balaam is a diviner in the Torah whose story begins in chapter 22 of the book of Numbers. Every ancient reference to Balaam is, considers him a non-Israelite. He was a prophet and the son of Bor. What a boy. <laughs> Christ considered following Balaam as a heresy. Balak was a Moabite king who sent for Balaam to come and curse the Israelites in Numbers 22 and 23. In Joshua 13, 22, it records that Balaam died by a sword during the battle for, for the Rabbinite occupation of Moabite land. The, in Revelation, it states that Balaam taught Balak to cast the stumbling block before the children of Israel. Uh, you might remember Balaam also from Numbers 22, where it mentions him on a donkey. And the donkey talks to him and says, I'm not, I am not who, you, you do not own me. I have been in the habit of doing this for a long time. No, he said, then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and if you remember this, and saw an angel of the Lord standing in the road in front of him with his sword drawn. Now, that didn't scare you to death, nothing mm -hmm. That's who Balaam was. And people were actually following Balaam, yeah. if you can believe this. But you know what? I think about what we follow today, Amen. and we follow some really far back. Right. Come on now. Right. You know, I, I work with a young lady. Well, she's not a young lady. She's the same age I am. But I work with a lady at my work, and I'll see her sitting there reading her Bible, and then I'll talk to her, and she'll tell me what she's reading, and then she'll launch into astrology. Yeah. 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 What? Yeah. <laughs> well, but that's what people do. We get so many things convoluted, turned around, and twisted up. I hope in reading this today, it will bring a little light to it. And in doing so, I tell you, I'm going to get a blessing out of this. And if you listen intently and apply it to your heart, you're going to get a blessing out of this. Amen. Amen. All right, Revelation 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show to his servants the things that must soon take place. Yes. Keep your eyes open. He made it known by seeing his angel to his uh, sending his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that saw. Blessed is the one who reads aloud, these words, 
uh, of prophecy. And blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written in it, Amen. for the time is Amen. near. That's Jesus. Keep it. Okay? Keep it. Yes. Keep it. All right. Greetings to the seven churches. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you. Now you're going to find as we go along here. Jesus on one hand, or I should say on one hand, Jesus, he compliments them. He gives them a pat on the back. And then he rips their head off. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't he do that with us? <laughs> Drops that bomb right in the middle of us. Yeah. Just when we think we're doing good. <laughs> All right. John of the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and was and who is to come. Yeah. From the seven spirits who are, before, who are before the throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead the ruler of the kings on earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom priest to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen? Amen. Behold, he is coming with, with the clouds and every eye will see him. Yes. How many times have we heard that in their life? Huh? Even those who pierced him and all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so. Amen? I am the Alpha and Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come. The Almighty. The Almighty. Amen. Visions of the Son of Man. I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulations and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos on account of the word of God. In other words, he was preaching the word of God and they threw him on the island because it was like a penal column. Yeah. 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 What did they do on that island? What did they do on that island? They isolate them. They isolate They dug mines. They worked they them like worked, slaves. They worked them like slaves. Yeah. It was not the good ones. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. It wasn't Fantasy Island by any stretch of the imagination. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus and to Smyrna and to Pergamum <laughs> and to Thyrea and to Sardis and to Philadelphia and Lyd Lydosia. <laughs> then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me and on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands yes. and in the midst of the lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white like wool, like snow. His eyes were like flames of fire. His feet were like burnished brass, refined in the furnace. And his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand, he held seven stars. And from his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. And his face was like the sun. Shining in full strength. Amen. When I saw him, I fell on his feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand upon me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Yes. And I have the keys to death and Hades. Write, therefore, these things that you have seen, those that are and those that are to take place after this. As for the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and seven golden lampstands and the seven stars, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the lampstands are the seven churches. Yes. To the angels of the church of Ephesus write, the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands, I know your work and toil and your patience endurance and how you cannot bear with those who are evil but have tested those who call themselves apostles and are not and found them to be false uh, how many of us are going to fall into this one i know who i know you are enduring patiently and bearing up for my name's sake and you have not grown worried now here's where this comes but I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. 
How many of us have done that? So caught up in life? First love. First love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. Yet this you have, you hate the works of the Nicolaitans, Nicolaitans which I also hate. Yeah. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who conquers, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Amen. Amen. Let's talk about that for a minute. That's really good. Let's Amen. talk about the church at Ephesus. Amen. Uh, the Bible says, as we just read, that the Lord knows the works, knows our deeds, and knows our per perseverance. He says that I know you cannot tolerate the wickedness of men, that you have tested those who claim to be somebodies and found that they are really nobodies. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have been so caught up in the doing that you forgot what you're doing it for. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Amen. He says you have yeah. left your first love. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have left your first love. And here's what happens with us. It's so easy for us to get caught up right. in doing the things of the ministry. This is a busy ministry, this love in action. We're busy constantly doing things for the community, for the people, for the homeless, for each other. Amen. That we oftentimes forget why we're doing it and who we're doing it for. We're looking at the gift and not the gift giver. Come on, somebody. Amen. We're looking at, at the things that we can do and staying busy, but we forgot what we're doing it for. Let me tell you, motion is not progress. Um, I'm not trying to preach. I'm just saying, listen, being busy does not mean you're getting ahead. Motion is not progress. Amen. Especially if you forget what you're doing it for or who you're doing it for. Let the church say amen. To amen. amen. Yeah, I have a good friend of mine on Facebook. Well, I shouldn't say we're good friends. We're acquaintances. We worked together many years ago. And the last time I met him, he was on fire. Oh, he was on fire. I tell you, I was so impressed because he was a biker. But he's one of those hard-nosed bikers. I mean, he was bad news to the word go. And when he became a Christian, his personality changed. I was astounded. But I've noticed from getting to back to know him again, he's fallen out of his first love. He doesn't love God anymore. Not the way he did. And when I've said him different things about Christ, you know, scripture, verses, whatever, he sends it back to me. Please do not send this to me. Oh. Boy, talk about falling. Whoa. I wonder what happened. At any rate, to the church at Smyrna, and to the angels of the church in Smyrna, write, the words of the first and the last who died and came to life, I know your tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich. And the slander of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are a, a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear that you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested. And for ten days you will have tribulation. Be faithful unto death. You hear that, folks? What we're supposed to be? Unto death. And I will give you the crown of life. Yeah. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The ones who conquers will not be hurt by the second death. Amen. Okay, let's talk about this for a minute, okay? Persecution, everybody sees what's happening in our, in our day and age now. So we all know, and we shared this last night at Micro Tabernacle, Persecution is coming for the church. But nobody likes to be persecuted. Nobody wants to suffer through the pain of persecution. Yet the Lord and the Lord is saying, listen, in this world you will have trouble. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. 
when you got saved, listen, when you got saved, God didn't promise you a rose garden. He didn't say, look, everything is going to be all roses now. Everything, you're never going to have no problems. You're going to be healed, saved, set free, delivered. He didn't say that. He, he said, I'm saving you so that at the end of your life, you're going to have a new life. But in the meantime, while you're living for me, you might have to go through some difficult trials. You might have to go through some difficult situations, but be of good cheer because people are watching how you go through. That's right. That's right. People are watching. Is the Jesus and you a real kind of Jesus? Amen. Are they different than they, the things they used to do? When they were before they were saved, they used to run to drugs and alcohol when 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 life got difficult. Now that they have Jesus, do they still run to drugs and alcohol? Uh, so the world is looking, listen, and persecution is coming for the church. Your job and my job is to stand firm, even in the face of difficult trials Amen. and circumstances. Amen. Difficulties are coming. Trials are coming. Amen. And there's three kinds of people in this church. Let me tell you about the people right here sitting among you. There's people who are in a trial, people who just came out of a trial, and people who are ready to go into some heavy trials. Yeah. You're in one of those three phases of your life right now. You're in one, you just got through one, or you're going into another one right now. You know why it's like that? Because God designed it to be that way so that you would become strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, Amen. not your own might. Amen? Amen. 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 So we have to stand strong in the face of difficult trials. Yes. I, I like this because John is talking to the church at Smyrna. He's saying the whole church right. is going to face persecution. Yes. Everybody at the church, if you are under the anointing of that pastor of that church, amen, where the where their famine is, that's where the feast is, amen? And if you're under the anointing, you might go through good times together, and you might go through some tough times yes. together. Yes. But stay together. Yes. Stay together. That's yes. the key. Yes. Your anointing is tied to the pastor that you're under. Amen. My anointing is tied to my pastor. Amen. He's seen some horrific things in his life. He's been through some difficult persecutions. Amen. And I had to see him, watch him go through so I can know how to go through. You guys saw how we had to go through when our son passed away. And how we went through that trial is how you're going to have to go through some difficulties. You're going to have to persevere. You're going to have to stay strong. You're going to have to stand firm in the things of God. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm always amazed when I hear people say, they bring somebody, you know, lead them to the Lord. And they say, your troubles are over. No, they're not. How many have heard Brother Eli's testimony about coming to the Lord? Yeah. I'd be willing to bet he's not going to tell you his troubles are over. <laughs> But we have something the world doesn't have. We have Jesus. Yes. We have some place we can go with our trouble yes. that the world doesn't have and can't even begin to understand. All right. To the church of Pergamum and to the angels of the church of Pergamum, write the words of him who has a sharp two-edged sword. I know where you dwell. Where Satan's throne is, yet you hold fast my name, and you did not deny my faith. Even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you. Here right, it comes again. Right. You, you, you have some, uh, you have some there who hold the teachings of Balaam, who caught Balak. You put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel. Okay, now hold on. Let's let's watch this real quick because this is important. There. There. Bala, Balaam was a sorcerer, yes. and his job he he got hired by Balak mm -hmm. to cast a spell against the nation of Israel. And when he was trying to cast a spell against the nation of Israel, the Holy Spirit would not allow him to. <laughs> The Holy Spirit told him, no, 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 you're not going to curse my people. Those are my people. Listen to me. Listen, this is important for you to understand. No curse can come against you if you are a child of God. Amen. Watch Amen. this. Watch this. So this is what he did. So this is what he did. This is how the story goes. He, he says, he tells King Balak, he says, I cannot curse what God has blessed. And those people of God are blessed. So I cannot curse them. But what I can do is tell you this, Balak. If you put some beautiful women 
in the camps around the young, strong men yeah. than those beautiful women, amen, yeah. are going to shake that. Well, come on, somebody. They're going to shake it. Like, they're going to shake it like they What did the man say? The man would say like this. The man would say, shake it. They don't break it. Come on. Amen. So, so what they did, he could not curse the, the nation of Israel, but he planted seeds inside so that their focus would be off God and off and on the women. Yeah. And this is what this is what happens with me and you. We are the children of God. We cannot be cursed. But the devil puts people in your life to yeah. put your focus off of God and on those people, on what they're doing, on what they're saying, on how they're acting, on what they're believing. Amen. And so that takes our focus away when we take our eyes off of God. What the church say? Amen. Amen. And you know, sometimes this happens innocently. You don't even realize it's happening. Oh, he's such a nice guy. He's not such a nice guy. All right. But he's got curly eyelashes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's so cute. I know I don't have that problem. Pastor Rick, this is, I just need to throw this opportunity in since we're talking about it. You guys hear about the, the uh, plan of the women to distract the men? Okay, well, that still works today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's why it's yeah. important for us to not show what we got. That's yeah. right. That's why it's important for us to dress modestly.
Amen? Yeah. And so that spirit is alive and well. We see that in a lot of marriages yeah. where the woman is trying to dominate the husband all the time. And then the man's natural place in the home is he is the authority and he is the head. But when the woman tries to bully him and dominate him and tell him what he's going to do and how he's going to do it and when he's going to do it, that's the spirit of Jezebel. You see that in churches where pastors are given all the authority to rule over the church, amen, and he, his power goes unchecked, and then he bullies people into serving, bullies people into giving, bullies people into doing those things, amen, where the spirit of God should be leading, the pastor is uh, operating in the spirit of Jezebel. So you must understand, listen, you must understand whenever there is a spirit that is counter to what the spirit of God says and counter what to do, to, to what the Spirit of God does, that is the spirit of Jezebel. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, that's not just the women. Also, the no, yeah. that, it, it, no, it's not just the woman thing. It, it works both ways. Oh, yeah. And you know what else can be a Jezebel? We use this to get into all sorts of things we shouldn't get into. Uh, we have no business getting it. Amen. No, we reach it. I know I do. I am. And you don't, you do, sometimes you stumble on it innocently. But it's still just as bad. And what it can do to your heart and your mind, yeah. this handy little item. All right. I gave her time to repent, but she refuses to repent of her sexual immorality. Behold, I will throw her into a sick bed, and those who commit adultery with her, I will throw into a great tribulation, unless they repent of her works. And I will strike her children dead. And all the churches will know that I am he who searches mind and heart. And I will give to each of you according to your works. Understand that. According to your works. What are your works? I can't answer that. Only you can. Uh, but to the rest of you in Thyatira who do not hold this teaching, who have not learned what some call the deep things of Satan, to you I say, I do not lay on you any other burden. Only hold fast to what you have until I come. The one who conquers and keeps my words until the end, to him I will give authority over the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. And as with earthen pots are broken in pieces, even as myself, I have received authority from my Father. And I will give him a morning star. And he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very good. Very Pretty good. powerful stuff. Amen. You see, I, you know, as, as I was studying this, I thought, how can I translate this into a message? Yes. When the word is complete. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I was telling you, read this. It's going to blow your mind. Yeah, All right. To the church at Sardis, and to the angels of the church at Sardis, write the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Oh. Woo. How many times wow. have you seen that in the church? <laughs> Woo. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. Remember then what you received and heard. Keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, I will come like a thief. How many times have we heard the Lord's going to come as a thief in the night? And you will not know what hour I will come against you. Oh my God. Let's, let's talk about this for a second. Yes, yes, yes. the hour. This is good. This is good. <laughs> Listen to what he says. He says, I know your deeds. I know what you have done. You have a reputation of being alive. In other words, what people say about you as a church. He says, but on the inside, you are dead. Oh, my God. Churches in this day and in this age uh, have very lively services. They know how to put the right person up there to sing and the right person up there to lead worship. Amen. Who can get everybody going. 
You have pastors who come up there. They do not have the spirit of God, but they come and they become psychologists from the pulpit. Oh, preach, Pastor John. Watch it. They become the, they become the, psych, they become the psychologists for the church. They can tell you, amen, they can tell you what's wrong with your life, and they can point out everything like a good psychologist and recommend uh, three steps to do this, five steps to do that, ten steps to do this, amen? And they have the reputation of being alive, and what we have now in the pulpit, pastor, what we have now in the pulpit is we have movie stars. Yeah. Come on, people who look so good and wear the right clothes and their, their teeth bling when they smile. And you can have your best life yet. Amen. Come on. You got psychologists, you got motivational speakers, and you got rock stars and movie stars that are in the pulpit. And they know how to they know how to get the crowd going. They know how to they know how to say the right things and do the right things at the right time, but they never allow the Holy Spirit to come in and run the service. There used to be a time, amen, when you would walk into a Pentecostal church and they would give you the order of service. And on the, the bulletin, on the order of service, there would be a line in the back that says, this service is subject to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. In other words, we, we're going to set a little bit of guideline, but if God comes in here, God is going to do what God is going to do. Amen. And so we might not get to tithe today. We might not get to sing today. We might not get to run around the church today because if God comes, you're going to know he's here. There used to be a time like that. But now we have everybody knows how to run a service. They want to hire a pastor who knows how to run a service because he knows how many songs to do and then do the offering. He knows how many songs to do and then do the prayer. He knows how long to, to, to keep the, the service at 20.75 minutes long because he knows at 22 minutes everyone becomes disinterested with the message. Oh my God. And so now we have, now we have pastors who are, who are pulpit professionals that don't have the spirit of God trying to pastor a church. Amen. And let me just tell you that if the pastor don't got it, the church ain't going to get it either. Amen. You cannot give what you do not have. To people who need to see the spirit of God alive. And this is what John is saying to the church. Listen, I know you're I know how you know how to run a good service. You have a reputation for being alive. We say this all the time. If the church is alive, it's worth the drive. Amen. We say that all the time. But the truth is, when you have a pulpit professional who knows how to run a service, it looks like there's life. But what about the lives of the people? Amen. 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 The evidence of my preaching is you are the fruit. That's right. Amen. Amen. And if your life is a wreck, and your life is in shambles, and your life is no good, and you're broke, and you're busted, and you're disgusted, my teaching has not done anything for you. Amen. That means the Holy Ghost. That means, that means the Holy Ghost is not at work in me because He's not at work in you. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah, that's, that's, right. Right. that's the truth. Oh, but hallelujah. But let me ask you a question. How many of you came here and you received the Lord Jesus Christ? Oh, hallelujah. How many of you, your lives have been changed by the preaching? Amen. Your lives have become, uh, even though maybe your circumstances haven't changed, but the way you handle uh, your circumstances has changed. And that's the evidence that when the pastor's got the spirit, the people catch the spirit from the pastor. I said this last night, the anointing oil rolls down. Not up. The anointing oil rolls down from my pastor to me to you guys. You guys receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen. 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 You know, it's funny you mentioned that, Pastor, about a Pentecostal church. I was raised in a Baptist church. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Baptists are called God's chosen frozen. For a reason. They follow that. Right on the money, they, they have a schedule, and they follow it. Yeah. Yeah. Rules, rules, rules. And if the Spirit should break out in a church, Baptist church, you're not in a Baptist church. Me, 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 me. And I remember the first time I went to a Pentecostal <laughs> church. <laughs> I'm sitting there, and the music's lively. They got a band playing on stage. The only thing we ever had was a piano player or an organ player. And the band was lively, and I'm running, getting into it. 
And all of a sudden, the back of the church doors, they fling open, and down the aisles, both sides, here comes a, a choir, and they're singing, and they're praising God, and I'm thinking, wow. Because <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. You don't do that in the Baptist church. Right, right. And it was wonderful. That's seeing the Spirit of God move in a church is absolutely wonderful. All right. <clears throat> Where was I? Oh, yes. Yet you have still a few names in Sardis, people who have not soiled their garment, and they will walk with me in white, yes. for they are worthy. The only ones who conquers will be clothed thus in white garment, and I will never blot their na this name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. And he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. I want to be a part of that. I don't know about you. To the church of Philadelphia and to the angels of the church of Philadelphia, write the words of the Holy One, the true one, who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut. Come on. And who shuts and no one will shut. All right, open. all right. I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, which no one is able to shut. I know that you have a little power, and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who says they, that they are Jews and are not, but lie, behold, I will make them come and blow down before your feet, and they will learn that I have loved you, because you have kept my word about patience and endurance. I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole earth to try those who dwell on the earth. I am coming soon, so hold fast to what you have, so that no one may seize your crown. Yeah. The yeah. ones. The one who conquers, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Never shall he go out, out of it. And I will write on him the name of God and my and the name of my of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down from God, my God, out of heaven, and my own uh, and my own new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. To the church. Amen. Let's Amen. talk about this real quick. This is the only one, this is the only one where he says, yet I hold this against you. He doesn't say that here. The church of Philadelphia is the church of brother, brotherly love. Amen. And this is what happens when we have a church that knows how to love. This is a love in action church. Amen. Amen. And when you have a church that knows how to love and knows how to reach out and knows how to display the love of God. Amen. That's exactly what God is looking for. We say this all the time. Jesus was always going somewhere to do something for somebody. Amen. So our love in action should be that we are people who are going somewhere to do something for somebody. We love them and we want to show them the hands and feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You know what I love? I love getting pastor going. I I just do a little study, and the next thing you know, he's got a sermon. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. That's right. To the churches at Laodicea, uh -huh. and to the angels of the churches at Laodicea, write the words of, of the Amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of God's creation. I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. Oh, How many of you fall into that one? Mm. Neither cold nor hot. Would that you.